come on in the room. Yes, yes, yes. We are getting ready for our Sunday morning virtual service. And so I'm just going to give people an opportunity to come on into the room. Let me go ahead and start my Instagram live. All right, all right. Hey there, Angelita Martin. I see you're in the room. As you're coming in the room, go ahead and hit some hearts or likes or something just as a way of saying good, good afternoon. Amen. Hey there, Angela. How are you? Jackie, I see that you're on. Uh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I thank God for this beautiful day. Amen. Hey there, my husband is on. Raquel is on. Amen. Come on in the room. Y'all already know what to do. It is time for our Sunday worship service, so guess what? Go ahead and hit your share button so that you can invite other people to come on and worship with us on today. Amen. Uh, for those of you all that may be tuning in for the first time, I am Apostle Tanya Mitchell, founding pastor of Nothing But The Truth Ministries located in Clinton, Maryland. Amen. Let me shift this camera just one second. All right, all right. And so, let us go ahead and have a word of prayer. Most gracious Father, we come before you, Lord God, on this Sunday afternoon just to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for allowing us to be in the land of the living. Oh, God, we just want to thank you, Lord God, even for technology and the, the brilliant brains, Lord God, that you have given people to come up with such platforms as this, Lord God, platforms that can connect us when we can't always physically be in each other's presence. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that this will be a word, Lord God, that will prick the hearts of those that hear it, Lord God. And I pray that it will not be a word that is just heard, but it will be a word that is applied. Father, I ask right now that I would decrease and your Holy Spirit increase. Father, keep me calm, Lord God. You know I get excited about the word, Lord God. And so just help me to be calm as I deliver this word on today. And Father, in the midst of everything that's said and done, you alone be glorified. So Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 And so there is a word, amen, of course, we're having a service uh, virtually today because of the weather, the snow that's coming down. Thank God the temperatures are not that cold because I can see it's not really sticking to the streets, even though it's sticking to the cars and the surface. But, you know, hey, we're here and this is what we're going to do. But as long as the weather's right, we'll be back in the building on Sunday. And so the title of today's message is The Nature of of the beast, the nature of the beast. And when you think about that word nature, nature is defined as the basic or inherent features of something, especially when seen as a characteristic of it. The word beast is defined as something formidably difficult to control or deal with. So when you look at the word nature of the beast, it's a saying that we've all heard before, but the nature of the beast is defined as the inherent or essential quality or characteristic of something. Here's the key part, which cannot be changed. Can I say that one more time? Because I want you to really get this in your, in, in, in your hearing today when you think about the nature of the beast. It is defined as the inherent or essential quality or characteristic of something which cannot be changed. Hmm. I want you to know today, people of God, each and every one of us has a beast within us, a beast that we must contend with each and every day. And so I, I don't care how holy you are, because somebody may be on here and talking about, well, you know, I done grown in the spirit. I'm walking in the things of the Lord. I'm walking in obedience. Boo, let me tell you something. You got a beast too. So sit your little pride for self down. 
Because at the end of the day, we all have a beast that we must contend with. So again, I don't care how holy you think you are. I don't care how much you walk in obedience to God or how long you have been saved. You and I have a beast within. And let me tell you something. It's a beast that you don't want to let out. You hear me, Instagram? It's a beast that you don't want to let out. And so it's amazing how God would just drop things in my spirit as he's preparing me uh, to deliver a word as I'm putting it together. And so um, I'm going to tell you, I don't have a clue as to what the name of the movie is, but the Lord back, brought back to my uh, remembrance a movie that me and my husband actually uh, watched together. Amen. And so uh, when you think about that movie, y'all got to excuse my dog. That's the thing about live, being live, okay? <laughs> my, my beast is barking. But anyway, it was a movie that me and my husband actually walked about, watched on TV. And most of the movie took place inside of a scene, amen, it's in the scene of an apartment building. And so it was a lot of shooting. Uh, uh, you had different people in different apartments. But in this one apartment, there was this door in that apartment. And when you looked at that door, it definitely got your attention because it had so many locks on the door. And it made you wonder what in the world is behind that door. Whatever it is, it's very serious because it's a whole lot of locks on the door, amen? And one thing about it, the owner of that apartment, the owner who was caring for what was behind the door, he did not want what was behind the door to get out, okay? And so if you was a person that actually went into his apartment, and the beast behind the door was moving around. Sometimes you could see it pushing up against the door. And it'll make you say, OMG, I got to get up out of here. The only thing that gave you a little bit of security was all of the locks that was on the door. But it will get your attention. And so if you was in his apartment visiting with that guy, you always knew that that beast was there. <laughs> Sometimes, again, it was loud, making growling sounds, and it was banging to get out. While at other times, you could be in the apartment, and guess what? It was quiet, and it was chilling. But let me tell you something. Just because it was quiet, just because it was chilling, doesn't mean that the nature of that beast had changed. Oh, ride with me in the spirit because I'm definitely going somewhere today. And so when you think about the beast that was behind that door, it would destroy everyone in sight when it was hungry if it had the opportunity to. Because that joker had an appetite like none other. Amen? And so the, 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 the caretaker of the beast, he never underestimated what was behind the door. But he also knew what he needed to do in order to tame that beast. Now, let me tell you, what he did to tame that beast is the opposite of what we need to do. And I'm going to explain that as I move a little further in the word of God on today. Amen. And so when we actually understand and we realize that there is a beast within us, we must refuse to let it out. Because if we let it out, it's surely going to wreak havoc. Amen? And so I need you to hear me clearly again. Nothing changes the nature of the beast within us. I'm going to say it again. Nothing changes the nature of the beast within us. So you got to understand. Go ahead and get your Bibles if you can. I want you to turn to uh, for, uh, Galatians. Amen. 
Galatians chapter 5, I'm going to read this particular passage in the New King James Version, and then I want to share another translation, but I want us to look at Galatians chapter 5, amen, and we're going to look at a very familiar passage of scripture uh, in this text. But when you think about the nature of the beast within us, hey there, Shirley, uh, Kenny, I see you on there and everybody else, Pete, DK, the whole crew, mama, everybody. Uh, uh, but when you think about the nature of the beast within us, it has been with us, amen, since we were born and remains with us even after we get born again, okay? It's been with us since we've been born, and it remains with us even after we are born again. So what is this beast within that I am referring to? Look at Galatians chapter six, uh, 5, verse 16 and 17. And the word says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. I want to read that same passage of scripture in the New Living Translation and it says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. See, what you have to understand that these forces are not fighting each other on the outside of us. These forces are fighting each other on the inside of us. And so when you think about it, the beast does not want you to win. Amen. And if school was actually being kept, when you think about how long you've been fighting the beast within the flesh, amen, guess what? The scorecards will actually reveal that for a long time in your life and my life, that the beast within was winning. And so plain and simple people of God, the beast is our flesh. The beast is our sin nation, nature. And as I said, it was with us when we was born. And even after we got born again, that old sin nature, that flesh within, it is still there. Don't ever fool yourself into thinking that it's not. And so when it comes down to it, we will have to contend with the beast within until we are no longer in these earthly bodies of ours. And so you may be wondering, okay, well, if we've been contending with this thing for a long time, and if you look at the scores or the scorecards, and you will see that for, for the majority of us, the beast was winning. Well, can the scorecard change? Even though the beast has won most of the fights. Guess what? Emphatically, yes. And so, again, the Lord dropped that movie in my spirit making me see that image of what was behind the door, that beast. But let me share something else, what, what really prompted this message. I know somebody on here is going to laugh, because uh, 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 if they don't say anything to anybody else, won't nobody know it's them, amen? But before I move forward, I want to share with you a post that I saw on Facebook that actually birthed this message in my spirit. So, you know, God just has a way of just bringing stuff together. You know, you see the post, yeah, you think about it, blah, blah, blah. Then he bring the movie, and then it's like you come together. He just start putting it all together, all the pieces of the puzzle together. And so I'm going to share with you, not who wrote the post, but I'm going to share with you what the post actually said. And I got it off Facebook. It says, 
I'm hungry. No breakfast, no lunch, long day, probably no dinner, went back to old habits, which is the exact reason why I have gained weight. Oh, and I like cake, birthday, no way in sight. So that post, when I actually read that particular post, it struck something down on the inside of me. It stirred up something in my spirit. And so when I read that post, it clearly spoke of the nature of beast and of man. See, when you think about it, that post was a natural post about eating habits. Amen. So now let me take you back to the movie and tie it together. In the movie, I shared with you something about the owner. And when you think about the owner, I said he knew exactly what to do to keep the beast that was behind the locked door. He knew what to do to keep that beast tamed. Guess what, y'all? He had to feed it. He had to feed that beast. And it's amazing because when the movie first came on, you see this guy in the grocery store and it's almost as if people was in struggling times or whatever, or they may have just been upset because of what he was doing. But he was in the grocery store and he literally was buying up all of the meat in the store. And there was somebody in the store that got upset because it's like, I need food for my family. But he had all the meat in the store. Not a little bit again, but a lot. And so, uh, 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 when you think about it, one feeding for this beast behind the locked door was outrageous. Amen? You would think, oh my God, you just fed that thing. All of that meat. For real, you would think it want, wouldn't want anything else. But he had to do this on a continual basis. Because how many of you know, sometimes when you start feeding something, it wants it on a continual basis. All oh, ride with me in the spirit, y'all. And so, the one feeding was outrageous. But no matter how much he fed it, the beast always wanted more. And so, after... He would feed the beast. When you would feed the beast, prior to that, he would be busting up against the door, making the ground a noise. So, so the guy had to be strategic with taking the locks off. But then when he took the locks off, the beast, the only way it could keep from attacking him is he had to get that food in there real quick. Once the beast realized that the food was coming in, he chilled. I'm going to stay right here. Just give me what I need. As long as you give me what I need, I'm not going to cut up. And so... No matter how much he fed the beast, it did not change the nature of the beast. And when he would feed the beast, the beast got quiet and the beast calmed down. So you imagine, this is your flesh that wants something and it's rising up. Give me what I want. Give me what I want. You better give me, you know, because the flesh is like a bullet. You better give me what I want. I want it now. Give it to me. So it's putting the pressure on you. And so soon as he, soon as he got what he wanted, the beast got what he wanted, he was like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. And it was as if he was chilling. And so you got to understand when you feed the beast, it got quiet and it calmed down. But again, guess what? Even though you ain't him, you still knew that that beast was in that apartment. Well, guess what? Our beast, the flesh, is the same exact way, amen? See, it begins to, 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 to rise up. Uh, it begins to growl when it wants to be fed. It pressures you and me to try and force us to feed it. Let me tell you something. When we are weak, we give into the pressure and we give it what it wants. And so it gets quiet because it's satisfied, but not for long. When you think about it, that quietness is a false sense of peace and happiness. 
You, you, you know how it is. Let me, let me give you a natural example that you might can relate to. Uh, uh, when you think about a, a junkie or an alcoholic, amen, when that monkey's on their back, when they need that fix, when they need that hit, when they need that drink, when they need whatever it is, that thing get up on them. Sometimes whole attitudes change, all type of stuff become, just become real evident that something is going on. That's because that flesh is rising up. And so when you think about it, when that monkey is on the back of a junkie or an alcoholic, guess what? They go through all type of stresses, things rise up, all kind of pressing thoughts going on, emotions and inner turmoil that is taking place. And so what happens is when all that's going on, guess what? If you're weak, a lot of times you give in to all that pressure. As soon as you, or as soon as you take that drink, it's like, ah, yeah, I'm good now. But that's false peace and that's false happiness. It's just that when you was feeling the pressure, you were weak and you gave in to what the beast wanted. And so guess what? I use the example of the, the, the junkie or I use the example of the alcoholic. But my, but my question to you today is what is your fix? See, because it may not be drugs. It may not be alcohol. Is it food? Is your fix porn? Is your fix sex outside of marriage? Is your fix anger to the point that you want to cut somebody out? What does your flesh want? Because no matter what your fix is, it does the same thing. When it wants what it wants, it rises up and it puts pressure on you to give into it, to give it what it wants. Because the beast wants what it wants when it wants it. And then on the flip side, you think about it. The beast begin to rise up on the inside of you. But when you're strong and when you recognize the beast, say, man, no matter how hard the press may be, you refuse to give in. Oh, you refuse to give in because guess what? You really do understand the nature of the beast. You understand you didn't had those false moments of peace and happiness when you fed the beast, when you fed the flesh. But guess what? It ain't really make you happy. And so when you're strong, you understand the nature of the beast and you don't allow the press, that monkey on your back to give it what it wants. And so, I said earlier that we must do the opposite of what the guy in the movie did to calm the beast. See, see, the guy in the movie, he fed the beast. Because one thing he knew is that beast was strong enough that even with all the locks, if you did not feed it, eventually with the constant banging and depression, it was going to come out. And so he didn't want that to take place. And so what he did in the movie, he fed his beast, but we must starve ours. Hello. Come on now. Hashtag that. You know what I'm saying? We hashtag a lot of stuff. But the truth is, he fed his beast, but we must starve ours. That truly is the only thing that will calm the savage beast within us. See, when you think about starving it, we starve the beast within by obeying the Holy Spirit. See, when the beast within us, when it does not eat, it becomes weak. But even though it becomes weak, I need you to understand that it is still there. And guess what? It's still hungry. Don't think that it's not hungry. You're starving it. And because you're starving it, it is hungry and it's still there. And you never know when the beast may rise up. But sometimes when the beast is not strong, the roar may be like, Arr, Arr. but when you feed in that thing and, the, and, and, and it's really strong, like, Arr, Arr. you know, the banging and stuff. But when it's weak, it's like, come on, please. Please give me, because starving it takes away its strength. Starving it takes away its power. But guess what? It's still hungry. 
It's still hungry. And it still wants to be fed. And so back to the post. In the post, the individual went back to old habits. The individual went back to old ways, which I see as equivalent to feeding the beast. See, uh, 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 and the writer was very clear of what they were doing before they did it. And so the writer of the post knew before doing so what the outcome would be of falling into the old habits. That's why the statement said, ah, yeah, you know what? Went back to the old habits, which is the exact reason why I have gained weight. See, this individual knows that the habits were not good. They know that it was old habits, but they went back to them. And they are able to identify what's going on with them physically as a result of their choice, of a, as a result of their actions. And so when I think about this, the sad part is that many believers know what the negative outcome will be beforehand if we feed the beast. Yet we do it anyway. We already know what will happen if we do A, B, and C. Yet we feed the beast anyway. And then guess what? After that, we ain't happy with the results. One thing about it, when you done fed the beast, when you done went back to the old habits, I promise you, that person ain't looking in the mirror saying, yeah, I look so good, fat. Oh, look at me. I'm all fat and overweight again. Oh, I look good. No, that ain't what's happening. The reality, sometimes you sit there and you look at yourself, look at you. Look at you. At one point in time, you got all of this off for you. Was looking real good. Had to get different size clothes and so Now look at you, just fat and nasty again. <laughs> but, but the truth is, that's what we do. We look at ourselves. We get disgusted with ourselves because guess what? We did it again. We fed the beast and now we're dealing with the consequences of feeding the beast, and we're frustrated. But like I said, it's a sad thing, but a lot of believers know what the negative outcome will be beforehand if they feed the beast, but yet they do it anyway. And so we will never, hear me, people of God, we will never be happy with the results of opening the door and feeding the beast. Come on, I want you to tell your virtual neighbor on today. Neighbor, keep the door closed. Tell your neighbor, if you're in the house with somebody, look at him and say, let me tell you something, you better keep that door closed. Because guess what? What's behind that door, that beast, you don't want it to come out. You don't want it to come to the surface because what it produces is never going to be good. And so the individual has gained weight and it's evident to see because I do know the individual personally, I know what they look like. And guess what? I need you to take this in the natural and the spirit because this is, this is a, a, a natural topic, but it's also related to spiritual things. And so because I know the individual personally, I know what they look like before. When the beast was winning in their life. I know what that looks like. But guess what? I also know what it looked like after they learned and understood about the beast within and the nature of the beast. And after they tamed that joker. After they stopped from allowing it to control their life. I also know what they look like. The, the other picture. You got the before. Then you got the after. And, and guess what? I also now can see the weight that was lost all over again because of the feeding of the beast. See, there's a lot of things that we can see with our natural eye, but there's a lot of things that we can see with our spiritual eye. And what you got to understand is when you open the door and when you feed the beast, trust me, people can see. 
They can discern. It may not be as easy as to see you went from weighing 250 pounds down to 150 and then back up to 250. That's easy to see. But some of the stuff that's going on with us spiritually, it takes a spiritual discerning eye to see. But don't, don't ever think somebody don't see. Don't ever think that you feeding the beast is not evident. And so, some of us, when you think about it, just like the, 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 the writer of that post said, I went back to old habits, which is the exact reason why I have gained weight. Well, I'm here to tell you today, some of us have gained weight and the Lord is saying to us today, straight from his word in Hebrews chapter 12, verse one, that we need to lose some weight. See, see the new living translation says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. I like the Amplified Version as well. It says stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin. See, some of us got some extra weight on us and it ain't necessarily a sin. But guess what? It's holding us back. It could be your, 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 your ways, your weaknesses that you haven't changed. It could be the people that you hang around. It's some things that has the tendency to weigh us down that we can't do what we need to do in the spirit and for the Lord. But it says stripping off, amen, taking off, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us in its web. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Uh, when I think about it, it says the, the sin that so easily trips us up. Guess what? It trips us up and it keeps tripping us up. And the key word is easily. It easily trips us up. It ain't hard. Because guess what? The devil don't have to work hard to trip many of us up. That's why that Bama used the same old tricks over and over again. The sad part is the same mess keep working. So it so easily trips us up without a struggle. And so when you think about it, that thing that cleverly entangles us is what the beast, the flesh likes. And when we constantly go back to that thing, we are like a dog. Uh huh. We are like a dog that returns to its vomit. And when you think about a dog that returns to its vomit, it eats the very thing that is spit up. And we're just like that. We, we, we know it's nasty and we know it's not good for us. Yet we were. We eat it anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. Have you ever realized why we vomit? Vomiting is the body's way of protecting us from things that are not good for us. And so because we took in some stuff, because we did some stuff that we should not do, amen, that we should not take it in, guess what? Because it does not agree with us, it comes up out of us. And when it comes up out of us, what comes out of us is the vomit. And like the scripture says, you know how we are so many times like a dog that returns to vomit. And so again, vomiting is a good thing when you think about it. As I said, it's the body's way of protecting us from what should not be in our body. What should not be in our life. And when you think about when you have to vomit... Before that really takes place, just think about it. Let's say you ate something. You took something in, but this is something that don't need to be in your body. All of a sudden, you begin to feel sick. Oh, something, something ain't feeling right. You get the wet mouth. Mm, mouth be getting wet. You be feeling it. That thing rise up on you. So you begin to feel sick. And you begin to, begin to feel queasy before you vomit. But after it comes out, Guess what? You feel like, oh, man, I feel good. 
See, everything that was going on in that process of you taking in what you didn't need to take in and your body was like, no, you don't need this in your life. It became like a war that was going on in your body on the inside of you and it made you sick and the sad part about it most people don't even want to vomit they try to hold it in they be trying to hold it in but i'm here to tell you let it out let it out because you will realize that once you finally let out what shouldn't be on the inside of you all of a sudden you begin whoa to feel so much better but think about it. There you are. There we are. This is what we do. We, we took it in. It wasn't right. It didn't agree with us and we vomited. And now here it is. We sitting there looking at this pile of mess that just came up out of us. Amen. This pile of mess that's right there. So, so, so there you are. You're looking at it. The very thing that made you sick. But now you look at it and you go. You begin to eat it. Amen. You begin to take it back in. And I know you're probably saying, oh, Apostle Mitchell, that's nasty. But I'm here to tell you, that's what we're doing in the spirit when we go back to the very thing that we have been freed from. No different. Won't you see what you do is nasty? Because that's what it is in the spirit. It's nasty. The very thing that you shouldn't have. The very thing that's making you sick. The very thing that's upsetting your life. Is the very thing that you taking back in. Like a dog. Returning to their vomit. And so. I just want to encourage you all today. Don't go back to old habits. Don't go back to old ways. Especially. When you know before you do what the outcome will be. See, many of us already know again what will take place if I do this, this, and this. Because guess what? We did it before. And we know what happened then. So don't allow the devil to see to deceive you thinking that you can do what you did before and it's going to be all right. The devil is what? A bona fide liar. And so... Don't go back to old habits and ways, especially when you know beforehand what the outcome will be. I'm here to tell you that nothing positive comes from feeding the beast. So simply keep the door closed. The beast cannot come out huh, unless you open the door. Uh-huh. We always talk about open up the door to the enemy. I always say don't even open don't even open it with a little teeny crack. Look through the peephole and when you recognize what it is, guess what? Don't be like, oh wait a minute, how can I help you? That's all the enemy needs is a crack. So again, nothing positive comes from feeding the beast. So simply keep the door closed. The beast cannot come out. The beast can't come to the surface. The beast can't wreak havoc. Unless you open the door. Nobody else has the keys to your beast but you. We all got a beast within. But my husband can't tame my beast. I can't tame his beast. You can't tame anybody else's beast except your own beast. Only you have the key. And so we need to understand that Jesus Christ... Our Lord and Savior, he was born, he walked this earth, he was beaten, he was bruised, he died, and he rose again so that we could be free from bondage. So that we could be free from the beast within, so that we can control it instead of it controlling us. And you need to understand that he who the Son is set free is free indeed. And so the word of God tells us in Galatians chapter 5, as I bring this message to a close, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made you free, and do not 
be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And if you refuse to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, you never ever have to worry about someone looking at your life and verse 7 being the very thought that's on their mind or the words that come out of their mouth and they say to you, you ran well. Boo. You ran well. You was doing so good. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Who hindered you from doing what you know to do? You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying tr the truth? Because guess what? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And so remember the beast within us does not need to be fed a lot in order for it to wreak havoc. So my final advice to you on this day is to starve it. Do not give it what it wants because the nature of the beast does not change. You better recognize, you better know the flesh on this side of heaven, this earthly corruptible vessel will never be saved. It will never be saved. It will never want to do its right because that's the nature of the beast. I was led... And some of you are men, some of you not. But I was led today to just simply give anybody on the live an opportunity, if they had a question that they would like for me to answer, as it pertains to the word, put it on the screen and I'll answer your question. A lot of times I don't get to really talk to you. I see your comments and I go back and I read them. But if anybody has a question, I just want to give you a moment to put it on the screen and I'm going to see if I'll be able to answer it. Amen. And so while people may be taking the opportunity to type in their question, if this message has been a blessing to you and you say, woman of God, I just want to sow a seed into your life because that word truly blessed me. You can sow a seed personally to me via my cash app, dollar sign, Apostle Mitchell. And if you want to sow a seed into the church that I pastor, you can also do that. The, the cash app is dollar sign in the TTM. All of that is on the title of this teaching. But uh, just wanted to give you all an opportunity. I pray that this message has blessed you. If it's blessed you, do you mind just hitting a couple of likes or a couple of hearts? Amen. Uh, if it has truly blessed you on today, I pray that it has. As usual, I get excited about the word when I'm preparing the word and, and delivering the word. I just always pray that it is sowed on good ground and that people take heed to it and apply it to their life because application is the only thing that makes a difference. And so I don't necessarily see any questions coming up on the screen. And one of the things that I did say is that Jesus Christ is the one who is able to set you free. He's the only one that can really help you to deal with the beast that's on the inside of you uh, uh, to keep you from being overtaken by it. But guess what? If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, the beast will continue to rule and control your life and reign. And so sometimes you have to realize, man, this fight that I've been doing or this stuff I've been going through, I, it's time for a change. Well, Jesus Christ is that change. Amen. Hey, look at my shirt. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. He is the one that keeps me rooted and grounded and he can do the same thing to you. It's just simply realizing that you need the Lord in your life. A lot of times people say, yeah, I believe in God. Okay, you believe in God. You know God exists, but have you ever received him? Have you ever made a commitment to receive him as your Lord and Savior? And one thing about God, we understand God the Father, but the only way to get to the Father is through his son, Jesus Christ. 
And so when you come to that place and you say yes to the Lord and Father, I'm going to receive your son Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm a sinner and I realize that I need to be saved. I'm, I realize I, I got a beast on the inside of me that I have to contend with, but I can't do it on my own. Jesus, I'm asking for your help for my entire life. When you do that, guess what? God hears you. When you're sincere, he hears you and he says, welcome to the family. And so it's a decision that you can always make right from the comfort of your home. And if you made that decision and you agree with what I just said, then I say to you, welcome to the family. Amen. And so, oh, Ma, you say, my mother says she's been trying to read my shirt. It says Jesus is the anchor of my soul. That's what it says. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you for taking this opportunity to tune in to today's word. Amen. Uh, hit the share button later on today, whatever the case may be, so that others can tune in and enjoy the Super Bowl. We know it's Super Bowl Sunday. Enjoy your time watching the game or whatever it is that you're going to do. Take care. Love you all. Enjoy the rest of your day.